All right, hi ladies. So I am really excited actually to present this concept this week. Um, I personally am in my spring phase of my feminine cycle of the month. And I think that's perfect timing for this because that means in my world it's generally peace, love, and rainbows, which is the opposite of what I'm presenting today. So it enables me to do it with as much love as this topic deserves. But this week is all about anger. And I think it's exceptionally um, important for a lot of you because um, especially in this group we have a lot of women who are naturally or um, probably not even naturally but learned people pleasers and are often you know the epitome of a proper lady and well put together and sophisticated and controlled emotions and um, tend to do what the people around her expect of her or want of her and it may not be what she wants to do what you want to do um, but it enables the flow of a situation well this week is all about disrupting that once in a while to enable your own personal flow and sometimes that involves big emotions so I'm presenting it this week on the um, same time that my toddler son is also starting to realize his big emotions and starting to throw temper tantrums. And it's interesting to watch how they pop up out of nowhere and then escalate um, to you know a, such a degree that he can't control anything about himself. But if I just let him go with it and you know let that emotion flow, it fizzles out pretty fast and then we can go right back into whatever he enjoyed doing five minutes before that. So it got me thinking about me as an adolescent and feeling like I had this in awe of other, especially females, that could say what they meant and mean what they say and have no filter it seemed, and yet somehow I always felt like they were able to do it with more grace than if I allowed myself to blurt out things that go through my mind or to say what I felt. Um, I always felt like they said the right thing even though it had a lot of emotion behind it and that if I allowed that lid to pop off my top, it would just not be as graceful and much more of an explosion, much more regret would follow after, um, and it just would be a bad, bad thing. And so I kept a lot bottled up inside me as an adolescent. And I, it took me a lot of years until, um, you know, becoming a single woman that I did the work to, and we'll go through it today so you can do the same, to get to a point where there wasn't so much bottled up inside me so that now, yes, I can speak my mind and I can be direct and honest, and um, but I do have that grace that um, enables me to do so with as much love as possible um, because there's not so much boiling inside of me waiting to burst out and overflow those moments. So if any of you ever have that feeling that you're just going to burst if one little thing goes wrong because you're just at your wit's end, um, I invite you to really pay attention to this concept and do the work this week to help alleviate that and bring you back into control of your emotions, but not in the patriarchal, you know, lady um, template that we're all supposed to follow of being in control and meek and quiet, um, but truly owning every emotion that arises and loving every emotion that arises. Being feminine is not always being a lady. Being feminine is wild and it is 
so much energy wrapped up into that and anger is included in that and you need to be able to let anger flow when it comes to you because otherwise it'll get stuck somewhere in your body and I do believe that that is a huge cause of a lot of illness and ailments that people have is that anger got stuck within them and they didn't know how to process it and expel it and um, make it you know a useful healthy part of life it is human to feel anger it's part of the joy we have of being in this body as a human existence on earth to feel those emotions and we need to not sweep them under the rug we need to feel them to their fullest degree so they don't get the best of us but we've been taught that by feeling any inkling of those bad emotions that we're letting them get the best of us and that is not true um, pushing them under the rug hiding them not talking about things not communicating that is um, the problem that's when it becomes bad so um, what I want to do today is to share a little bit of my past on how I did this work, give you some tips on how to do it, and then enable you that sometime this week to promise us that you will do this process. And you don't have to share it with us, although I do know some people, um, I personally did it all within a journal um, or on paper that, um, you know, loose paper for some of it because we do burn some of it and get rid of it. Um, but if you're more of a verbal person and you process vocally, then um, always you're welcome to post a live um, you know, monologue on this group. Um, only the six of us are, um, have access to see it. And you can just write in the tagline that this is not even for our eyes, for your eyes only, but sometimes posting it as a live video gets you to be in the moment. It's um, different than, you know, just saying it out loud alone in your house or even recording it on your phone, knowing that only you have access to that. By doing a live and posting it in this group, um, the honesty comes through to yourself. You become more genuine to yourself, present in the moment, and um, not, you know, just kind of half-assing it which um, can happen if you're just, you know, talking to yourself alone in a room. So um, feel free. I invite anyone that wants to, to post it as a live. Um, but like I said, I did it as a written journal entry. So um, there will be a homework assignment at the end of this video. And I please, please, please ask that you all participate. All right. So um, what the start of this for me, so I kind of told you, I've, I've seen it in the raw form in my tiny toddler, and I've experienced the opposite of it as an adolescent, and then did the work as a single woman when I was living in my own house and taking that time of self-love to do the work instead of going out and trying to seek what I was missing. Um, I was trying to fill that gap within me doing the work at home. And one of the things that I sat and did was an anger monologue. Um, sometimes I know people talk about, you know, if you're feeling a lot of emotion, write a letter and just never send it. That's kind of the general concept here. Um, but it's a little more formatted. So um, Basically, I want you guys to get in touch with that bad bitch inner woman inside you that has emotion and maybe pent up emotion and recognize that there are probably things within you that you have not fully processed, whether it's um, something from your childhood. Maybe you had an asshole dad or a non-existent, non-present mom or um, even just siblings that just never let you get a break. Um, there's probably some anger in there somewhere from childhood. Um, if you've had some, you know, if your first love, so this was what I processed for me, it was my first love. Um, 
did me wrong. I mean, eventually he married my best friend um, after a lot of cheating on me and just being an ass for way too many years. I didn't quite know how to leave that one because I believed in true love, first love. So um, it took finally years later, probably a decade later, of sitting with myself in a room and a journal and just writing out that yes, that made me angry. I never told him, I, I told him it hurt me. I made it clear I had other expectations of him. I left him. Um, I did a lot of things, but I never simply said I was angry. I never realized I was angry. I had so much anger in me that he stole that first love scenario from what I thought it should be. I had so much anger that he dated my best friend behind my back and for better or worse went on to marry her. For better or worse they went on to get divorced. But I had so much anger that I didn't know I had until I started writing and realized how much was flowing out of me. And just saying it made me realize that I had made so many dating decisions after that first guy based on an emotion I didn't even know I was feeling. I was finding guys that were equally shitty, feeling like because I didn't get the love that I thought I deserved from this guy, I'm gonna find other guys that are like him so that I can feel like I won over a guy at least like him if I didn't win him over. And it was a repeating pattern that was going over and over and over in my life until I realized that I was just fucking angry and I needed to deal with that anger and let it flow out of me. And I wrote in my journal all the things that I was really pissed at him for. And what's interesting is I never had to tell him any of that. I never had to send a letter. It wasn't even a letter. It was just me finally being honest with myself in a journal and letting it flow uncensored, unloving, unabashedly, unapologetically fucking pissed and let it flow. And that's what I'm inviting you women to do for whoever that is. And there may be multiple. It may, because of a repeating pattern, it may have started with someone in your childhood. It may have showed up somewhere in your adolescence. It may be repeating itself in later life. Um, so find out where the most anger rooted within you and start there and just let it flow, whether it's a live video, whether it's talking to a friend, whether it's writing in your journal, let it flow and do not censor it. Do not try to make it loving. Do not try to make it nice. Do not make it politically correct. Just fucking get it out of you. Let it burn, let it fire, let it rise, let it bubble boil out, okay? That's the assignment. So what I'll say is like with the toddler and as an adolescent, I felt like I had so much inside me that if I ever actually let my emotions go, you know, let that wildness come out of me, I, I would lose myself. I would lose control. I would lose who I was. I would do something I would regret. It just scared the hell out of me to think that um, I could let that fly because I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know what it was capable of, um, it scared me. And so I kept it bottled in for a long time. And I think it made me a bitch to some people that probably didn't deserve it just because I had that anger in me. Um, I think it made me dislike myself a lot of the time because I felt like I shouldn't have these feelings. I should be more control of my emotions when really it ended up being that no matter how crazy, wild, rampant you think your emotions are, it's safe to let them flow. It's safe. If you do it in a way that is not directed towards that person, if you do it in a way that is simply letting it flow out of you. So whether it's onto that journal page, whether it's into your friend's ear, whether it's 
vocally on a video here. If it's, I mean, if you believe in God, I believe in a loving God, and cursing is fine if needed. Like, he will love you anyway, and you can be fully fucking honest, and you don't have to censor it, and you can do it in a prayer, and just be like, this person hurt me so much, and this is what I'm feeling about them right now. You can say that to the Lord, the universe, spirit, whatever your beliefs are, you could just say it to the empty room, but you need that energy to get out of you. And it is safe to do so if you do it not directed at anyone. And then there is a third part of this assignment, and it is a very, very, very important part. So you do that, you let it flow, you let it run wild, you get it all out. And it could take three pages, it could take three months, it could take a year, but I invite you to not let it dwell as an assignment. I invite you to set a time this week and let it flow. And what I think you'll find, because everyone I have do this does, and when I did it, it's how it happened, and everything I've read, this is a thing, that if you let it truly, truly, truly flow, no censorship, no holding back. It fizzles out kind of fast, just like my toddler. You just need to get it out, and then it's done. And then it doesn't even feel as big as you thought it was. So that's what I realized, is once I got all that anger about my ex out, I realized I had already outgrown him. I had already outgrown my best friend that had married him. I was doing great without him, and I gave myself permission in getting over that to choose better guys from then on, and not consistently recreate that pattern hoping for a different result when I realized that I was just subconsciously trying to process old information that no longer served me. and. I think you'll realize that if you do this, if you truly dedicate the time and space to do this, like have a moment alone in a room to yourself, give yourself an evening um, uninterrupted, you know, if you have to do this on your lunch break, wherever you're going to be uninterrupted to just let it flow, you'll feel lighter, you'll feel more at ease with that situation. You'll feel more at ease with your emotions, with yourself. So the final um, part of this assignment is to after it's all, all come out of you, all of it. It's in this big cloud, Eeyore cloud in the universe, separate from you. Then I invite you to love yourself. Now this is key. So some of you are doing your 30 day challenge, separating yourself from another person. So you may find that this assignment is effective to relinquish the anger you might feel towards that particular person. Some of you are doing a 30 day challenge with regards to your own behaviors, beliefs, or um, habits. So, um, Either way, if you do this assignment, which may or may not relate to your 30-day challenge at all, but in case it does, I wanted to share the scenario, that whether you do this assignment and express all the anger you feel towards a person, um, you might also find that all the anger you feel is actually with yourself. A lifetime of disappointments or failures or unmet goals or um, disappointing your parents or losing friendships, losing relationships, um, failing in love, failing in a you know career sense, whatever you judge yourself for, this is also an invitation to let it fucking fly. Like in that journal, I give you full permission. You do not have to be loving to yourself at all and just let the anger fly. 
start with a big fuck you to whoever you're sending this about, whether it's a person from your childhood, a person from love relationships, a friend that betrayed you, or yourself. You can start with a big fuck you and let it roll from there. So if you do this, I invite you to be fully honest, fully open, fully bad bitch form. As long as afterwards, after you let it all flow, after it has left you, that no matter who you did it to, whether you did it about someone else or about yourself, that you come back and sit centered and love yourself for it. Love yourself for letting it flow. Love yourself for being honest. Love yourself for expressing what you are feeling. It doesn't have to be that you were right or wrong or justified or whatever. Just love yourself for doing it. Love yourself for doing this activity. Love yourself for doing the work. Love yourself for acknowledging the shadow of darkness within you and letting it flow through you and out of you. Love yourself for it. Because you deserve that. Because you are a human being. You are a soul. And for that reason alone, the fact that you breathe air on this planet is enough reason for you to love yourself. And you do not have to be kind and caring and peace, love, and rainbows every day. You do not have to be a lady. You do not even have to be right. You just have to be honest. So love yourself when you are. Love yourself for expressing those feelings. They don't have to be right. They don't have to be justified. They don't have to be good feelings. And they certainly don't have to be ladylike. Love yourself for it. Truly sit here, hand on your heart. I love the woman who shared those thoughts. I love the woman who felt that emotion. I love the woman who let it fly. I love the bad bitch that said her piece. Love her. Give her props for letting it just be real for a moment. And if it was about someone else, I invite you to just put that journal away. I didn't burn mine, it's still somewhere. It reminds me of this work that I've done and how far I've come. Um, but a lot of times, if you truly realize that it's something that no longer serves you and you want to really be done with it, um, light a fire, light a match, burn this. It no longer needs to exist. It has been expressed out of you. And fire is energy too. Fire can take care of a lot of things. Just let it burn if you want to. Um, if you post it as a live video here, delete button. It's the same as burning it. Just get it out first. Let it no longer weigh heavy on your heart, on your shoulders, on your mind. Don't let it get stuck in your body. It no longer serves you. And once you've done this, you learn to trust yourself. You learn to trust your emotion. Like you let something that huge come out of you and you survived. You're still alive. They're still alive. You're still alive. The world is still spinning. Things are okay. It didn't crash the system. So that will give you permission to trust yourself that next time that red flag comes up a second time on something that you're working on, you know, possibly creating a boundary, you have that vocal sustenance to now I can speak my mind. I can say that this is making me pissed off with the grace of not having so much underneath it boiling out that it's unacceptable and is more than you intended, um, feels like more than you can control. That's no longer an issue. All of a sudden, you can speak your mind and have that grace of those wild feminine women that are able to tap into their bad bitch when it makes sense and not have too much coming up with it because they're at peace with nature, they're at peace with themselves and so if something angers them, it's just that thing. 
It's not 20 million other things that that was the last straw. It's just that thing. And so they, with grace, can deal with just that thing. And that is all because they've done the work to honor and acknowledge the shadow darkness within them and not push it under the rug, not make it a bad thing, but make it part of their powerful femininity that is so much a part of who you are and why you're amazing and why you are a woman and what you're capable of. And to be able to love fully, you also have to have those opposite emotions because it's all part of love and you have to be able to love yourself for having those emotions, for expressing those emotions when it feels like you're called to do so. And loving yourself for it enables you to know true love and enables you to fill your cup first so that it overflows and you can love other people. Because if you can love your own dark side, you can love other people's dark side. And if you're looking for a true partnership, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage, friendship, um, even a company is an entity that has these same energies. If you can love the dark within you, you can love the dark in someone else. And no one is squeaky clean, bright and shiny. Nothing, no entity, company, person, Nothing in nature or life is always bright and shining light only. We all have our dark side. We all have those dark shadows within us that if you do the work to be able to love your own, you can know true love in connection to someone else. Because it's only then that you can love them through their darkness as well. And it will also attract entities, companies, people to you that have done the work to also know how to flow those energies and how to maintain control of themselves in a healthy way, not in a hiding, omitting, um, brushed under the rug kind of way. So by doing this work, you open yourself up to an entire new level of relationship. If you're already married, it actually, by doing the work inside you, gives the person that you're connected to permission to do their own. You don't have to tell them you've done it. You don't have to show them you've done it. You don't have to ask them to do theirs. It just, by law of attraction, by you doing this work, they will feel the energy shift that enables them to meet you at the same level and do their own work and process any underlying emotions that they haven't processed to be able to meet you here and now in the present moment dealing only with the present issues that always come up in a relationship but if you have brushed stuff under the rug you bring in every other issue that you've never dealt with into every fight and you can't fight fair so if you do this work to address what angers you, past, present, all of it, childhood, now, growing up, all of it, deal with it, recognize it, understand it, know it exists, and let it fucking fly at least once. Just let it flow, let it all out. And if you've done that work and can love yourself for it, love yourself after you've done the work, you can love someone else. So if you are not currently in a marriage or relationship, this will then make you a magnet to people who have done this work, to people who no longer have a ton of pent up anger, to people who no longer hide their emotions, but attract people who fully are present with you in that relationship and bring only the energy that you create together in that relationship and no past relationships come into that bond with you, that's who you attract when you've done this work. And same with a career. 
if you're considering career change or just doing this work enables you to acknowledge and recognize that yeah not every company is going to do everything right but if they're doing it with the right intentions you can love the company through its dark side um, and be fully present with them so whatever area of your life finances if you can love yourself fully it attracts finances that come from fully loving spaces um, and there are an abundance of those, but you can't tap into them until you've done this work. All right. So step number one, decide where the root of the anger is within you. Did it start with someone in your childhood? Was it a significant relationship in adolescence? Is it something you're going through right now that's just taking precedence and you need to finally deal with it fully? Um, so step one, where is the anger rooted within you that has not been processed yet? Step two, let it fucking fly. Start with a big fuck you and let it roll from there, whether it's on paper or vocally, whatever you need to do. Do not direct it at anyone. Just let the energy move out of you and into the universe, okay? Step number three, love yourself for doing this work. Love the one who was pissed. Love the one who judged. Love the one who got angry. And love yourself for letting it flow. Alright? So that's basically it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this concept. If anything else comes to mind, I'll share it in the Facebook group. I think I will do our next group meeting on Sunday at 1.30. I'm feeling like that's right. Um, I just kind of do what feels right each week. So I know I'm sorry it jumps around a lot, but with such a small group, I can't commit to just one time knowing that even one person will never be available at that time. It just doesn't feel fair. So I do mix it up. I'm sorry it's not predictable like it would be in a larger group, um, but we're making it work. So this Sunday at 1.30, I'm going to go with that. I haven't looked at the calendar. Um, but it feels like that will work. And then just other housekeeping things. You guys have been great at keeping in touch with me on how your challenge is going. Um, if ever it feels difficult, I invite you, and I've done this with some of you just via text or over the phone, but check in with your ultimate reason for choosing what you've chosen for this challenge. So I call it a big why. Um, it's the big reason why you do what you do. So um, my overarching big why, it kind of taps into your personal mission statement that we started with in the beginning, is to love myself so that I can love others, and love others so that they may love themselves. So everything I do, I do with that in mind, and so if I'm doing a challenge, that is my big why, to love myself. So if I commit to doing something for 30 days or not doing something for 30 days, in order to love myself, I have to keep that commitment to continually build that trust within myself. So um, if your big why is to set an example for your children or to um, just do the work, kind of like what we're talking about today with the anger um, processing. Um, if your big why is to simply do the hard work that maybe you sometimes numb with other, um, with a crutch, then that's your big why is, you know, this is hard, this is difficult, I want my crutch right now, but I am committed to doing the work or to loving myself or to being an example for others or whatever your big why is. Um, write it down, you know, take lipstick to your bathroom mirror, a post-it note in your wallet, whatever it takes. But when it gets hard, that's going to be your motivation. Um, so make sure it's something that resonates deeply with you. So anything like um, people who do diets and they're like, I you know, want to eat just salads. Um, 
if they hate salad and they think their big why is to, you know, wear a bikini for their beach trip, um, they have to be really excited about that beach trip for that big why to be effective. If they're not looking forward to the beach trip, they don't like the people they're going with, um, or they've already bought a one piece and know they're never gonna wear that bikini even if they take it, it's not gonna be effective. So your big why has to resonate deep within you as a motivating reason to do what you want to do. And it has to be aligned with who you are. It can't be your parents' expectations, your spouse's expectations, or even your expectations of what you hope for your child. It has to truly resonate with you as an individual and what's important to you. And once you tap into that, nothing is impossible. You can do 30 days, 60 days, a year, 25 years without your crutch because it is so deeply a part of who you are and the goals that you have and the joy that it brings you to reach those goals because they are truly yours. They're your heart's desire. And if you have trouble tapping into what your heart wisdom is, I invite you um, to let me know that on our one-on-one -on -one call this month because um, that's one of my favorite things to do is help women really recognize their inner heart wisdom, that little voice inside them that is truly the truth for them and no one else's expectations or even their expectations of themselves, but truly what brings you joy. So, that was a lot. Tangents. Anyways, I'm so excited to be on this journey with you ladies and I hope that you will fully commit to processing the emotions that are supposedly bad, um, that are just part of your wild feminine and they need to flow with you as much as love flows through you and to love yourself for doing that work and letting it flow. All right, have a wonderful week. I'll see you all at 1.30 on Sunday. I love you.